Hi, I'm Devin Varner with Varner Equipment in Delta, Colorado. Today I was going to go over a, how do we hook this trailer up to our vehicle exactly. If you like videos like this, make sure to subscribe. So I was going to just show you exactly what um, should be done whenever you're hooking it up. First thing you're going to have to do when you get up to hook it up to it, you literally got to get the ball underneath the hitch. Um, if it, you're new to this and you haven't ever done that before and you have a hard time finding that, um, and you do not have a backup camera on your vehicle, you can buy some aids in that area. Um, there's a product that we have here that we sell that is a couple of magnetic sticks that you can put one of the sticks on top of your ball, one of them right here on top of the hitch, and then you line the two sticks up in your mirror or in your back window as you're backing up, and then whenever the hitch pushes the stick that was on your ball off, you know that you're right over the top of the ball and you're ready to line up. That is something that we can help you with um, if you're looking to get something like that. If you don't live near us, we'll leave a link for you on that so that you can find a product like that that will work for yourself and able to get that so you can do that better. Right now, we are already underneath the ball. We have the truck right where it could be. This is a two and five sixteenths hitch. That's the other deal that you need to know right away is what size of ball does the trailer have. Typically, that goes in weight ratings. So there is such thing as an inch and seven eighths ball that is usually on stuff rated for 2,000 pounds or less. It's usually on little tiny trailers. Um, very uncommon. You don't see it very much anymore. You used to see it a little bit, but not much anymore. Most everything else is two inch or two and five sixteenths. Um, if you have a hitch like this one here, this is a B&W hitch that we have in the back of this pickup. This has all three balls on them. This has a two and five sixteenths, an inch and seven eighths, and a two that you can rotate around to get it where you need to be. This hitch is also adjustable up and down, which you are going to want to adjust to get the trailer to ride level. The whole idea with that is when the trailer is riding level, your load is dispersed between both axles and the suspension evenly the way that it should be the way that the manufacturer designed the trailer to be. If you run with the hitch way up high and the trailer is sitting really proud on the front, all your weight is getting dispersed to your back axle and not on your front axle. Vice versa, the same thing. If you run it really low, all the weight's on your front axle instead of on your back axle, and it's not evenly dispersed throughout the trailer. So that's the whole idea is to run this trailer level and with the right size ball. Once you have that set where you need that to be, you are gonna just go ahead and set the trailer down on it. Now this hitch that's on this trailer, this is on our new um, Big Tex trailers. You can see this right now starting to come up. This hitch is made by Demco. This is their new hitch to where you don't have to do anything other than just lower it on and you can see that it automatically latched itself down there. There is other styles of hitch that you have a handle of sorts that you have to pull up and uh, once you let the trailer down on the ball then you're going to flip that over to lock it on. This hitch to unlock it you literally just pull it straight up like that and now it's unlocked from the truck but when you're hooking it up it'll push itself on and over the ball just the way it's supposed to. There is a safety lock on almost every one of the hitches that's on the market today that you can put a actual keyed lock or a combination style lock in that if you don't want somebody taking the hitch off or you don't want them unhooking it from your vehicle or when the vehicle or the trailer is being stored somewhere you can lock that down so nobody can take it um, or you can have it as just a safety on here. There is a small hole right here on this hitch that you can put a safety pin through that which will lock that pin down and not allow that to come up going down the road or not allow somebody to take it off of your vehicle. Again guys, we're going to leave a link below for these hitches and for those little lock pins in here if you don't know what to get or where to get them. Uh, we sell them here, but if you need something to have an idea what you need in there, we're going to leave you a link for that. Also, this trailer has an adjustable hitch right here on this side, which will do the same thing as this if you do not have this. If you have a fixed receiver hitch on your vehicle, you can adjust this to get your leveling and you get your ride height right on the trailer. Once you are hooked to the trailer, you're going to want to put the jack up, whether it be jacking this all the way up, whether it be tilting your jack if it is a tilt style jack. This particular one has a drop leg on it that you, uh, you literally pull the pin out of it, raise the jack up and put the pin back in. Um, this works really well so that you don't have to crank the jack all the way up, all the way down, all the time. You can just run the jack leg down and you can do that. One deal with this, if you forget about this, this is a way that a lot of jacks that we actually end up replacing a lot of jacks is a guy leaves this halfway down and then you go ahead and you take off and you go over a, a speed bump, something along those lines, and that jack is still down a little bit and you catch it on that and it'll bend the bottom of the jack out on it. So make sure that you always pull that jack up. Once you're hooked onto here, 
you've got safety chains. Uh, this trailer here has two of them, uh, rather large chains. These are meant to be crossed, uh, right side to the left side, left side to the right side. And the reason behind that is going to be that um, if the trailer comes off, that the, the hitch will fall down on the chains and by crossing them it makes a cradle for the hitch to land on and doesn't drop the hitch right down on the ground. Um, ideally, you would like to hook these chains so that you're hooking the hook from the backside, pulling it forward. On this particular truck, it doesn't work. The holes aren't big enough. It doesn't work through the backside. So like that, you're wanting that cross in those chains. And then on some trailers, you can adjust those chains back here. This is one that can be. This pin can be pulled out and you can move that. You don't want them chains dragging on the ground. They, they wear, they spark. Everything like you, you don't want that. You want them not tight because if they're tight, you can't turn, but you do want them to be off of the ground with some slack in them. So make sure with that, that you adjust those chains where they're being. You've seen some people will take them and twist the chains to take up some of the slack. That's something a guy can do, or you can pull the pins out, shorten the chain, put the pins back in again. Your electrical connection is going to be one that you're going to have next. This will be what houses all your lights and your brakes is going to go through this one plug. Most everything that has about 6,000 pounds is gonna have brakes on both axles, uh, here in Colorado anyway, it's gonna have this seven pin plug on it, this round seven pin plug. If it's a single axle trailer, it's only gonna have the flat fours. Um, almost all vehicles that are made now have this seven pin on them. Um, if it's a small passenger style SUV, it might only have the four pin, but if you get uh, to this truck and you don't have an actual four pin on it, there's a small adapter that can be purchased that you, uh, you put, take the adapter, you plug your four pin harness into it, that adapter will fit into there and yet your four pin wiring will fit to it. There is also some older vehicles running around that use a round aluminum six pin wire. There is also an adapter for that. It's a little bit more cumbersome, but it's an adapter that you can have the, the, this will plug into a female socket and then there's a male socket that will plug into the pickup in that old style one. With this again, depending on your trailer, depending on who built it, you could have a lot of cable here. You could have enough cable that you can get that down right close down to the ground. On this particular truck, um, we can run this in a couple different versions or a couple different areas. We're gonna just try putting it here right now and we're gonna put it in here and see what it looks like. Right there, I don't see any risk of that electrical wire hitting the ground. I don't see any risk of anything there. I think we're fine just on that. If you were really long, you can do a couple different things. You can take that, put one wrap around your jack and pull it back up there. Um, pull it to this side of the trailer and bring it over this way. There's several different things you can do to get rid of that slack so that you don't have issues with that. Um, this is probably the most um, confusing part of the whole thing with hooking up the trailers. This is your battery breakaway. Uh, this has a new product on it, which is gonna put a link on here for you and actually show this product because it is very handy to have. This is what they call a zip strip. This is a slinky cable for your breakaway that's gonna go over and hook somewhere back here on your bumper, like right where your safety chains hook. What this does is when the ball breaks away, your hitch falls off of your truck. That is supposed to tension before your safety chains do. When that tensions, that pulls that pin out of this little box which in turn, this has, on a dump trailer, it's using the battery that dumps the trailer, but on most other trailers, it has a small little battery in there. When you pull that, it sends the battery voltage to your brakes and locks up your brakes to bring the trailer to a stop, what it's supposed to do ideally. This is always a confusing part for a lot of customers because they don't know what to do with it because a lot of them will not have this little zip strip on them. I brought one of the original ones that a lot of people see so that you can see it. And I can show you how to hook this one as well, but then you can see what you have to do with it. The original ones, it's the same box. It's gonna be mounted in the same place. Now you just have a cable that seems to be way too long to do anything. If you were to grab a little, uh, little carabiner hook and hook that on, that thing is darn near down on the ground and would definitely never tighten up before your safety chains did. Once your safety chains tightened up, this would never pull and deploy. People ask me, what are you supposed to do with this? How are you supposed to hook this thing up? What are you supposed to do? What they'll say in the manuals for this is to unplug it. And on a lot of vehicles, you can actually wrap all the way around the bumper or all the way around the receiver hitch. Go down, pull that all the way in there, uh, put that through there and tighten it up. And then you'll be able to hook this back in there again. 
once again, you're wanting this thing to pull long before those pull to in order for the brakes to be set before your chains lock up. These things will only go in here one direction. Um, like right there, it's got it's multi, it's only one direction. If you try it the other way, it don't go. Uh, don't force that in there, but it, it won't go in there. You're not going to hurt your trailer in any way, shape, or form by pulling this out. I've had people that when we pull that out of there, they get scared like, oh man, you just ruined this. This thing's a one-time use thing. All it is is a metal switch inside there that when you pull this pin, they're spring-loaded and the metal contacts come together and allow the battery voltage to go through it. Once you put this back in there again, all you do is you spread those contacts back out again so they're not making a contact in there. This is one, like I said, when you go to unhook it then, if this is the style that you have, just pull that back, take this through the loop, pull it around there, and it will do the exact same thing. You can get a clip and hook that on there, but then the deal is you have to figure out what you're gonna do with the slack. Cause you gotta be able to get that slack out of there so that it is somewhat taunt. And that's where this one comes in really well. It, it's clean, it's easy to use, they do a good job, and it's something you don't have to deal with fighting with this whole cable mechanism. Once you have all this hooked and all ready to go, you're gonna wanna do a walk around on the trailer. You're gonna wanna walk around and make sure that your lights work. Them plugs are notorious all the time for having one pin that's not right. Your trailer plug having a pin that's not quite right. And so you're gonna wanna do a walk around. Make sure your tail lights work. Make sure your running lights work. Make sure your brake lights work. Um, you can pull it ahead and you have a brake controller in your vehicle and use your manual slide bar on your brakes to actually apply your brakes and see if you've got everything hooked up and your brakes are working. One issue you can have if you are using an adapter on your wiring, there's some of the adapters that are out there, um, especially if you're going from a six pin to a seven pin, that adapter will have a center pin brake or a center pin auxiliary. That being said, what it will do, if it moves your center pins to the brakes on the adapter, the center pin on most of your trucks is a 12 volt constant power. So when you plug that adapter in, you've got constant 12 volt voltage going all the time to your brakes you'll go to pull away and your brakes will be locked up. And you'll be thinking to yourself, what just happened? My trailer was working fine and I put this adapter on and now it don't work. It is literally that brake adapter, or that adapter is wired wrong for your brakes. Most of them adapters you can take apart. There's uh, two screws in there, then the, the half comes open and literally the two wires that go to the middle can be changed. So you can switch that center pin and the brake wire around and that would be what the difference between that one that is a center pin auxiliary and the one that is a center pin brake, what the difference between the two are. Once you get to this point, you've checked all your lights, all your lights are working, you should be ready to go down the road and should be able to do everything that you need to with the trailer with ease, knowing that you've got everything hooked up and ready to go.